Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. My name is uh, Ram, as uh, Sharmista mentioned, and I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor at the University. Uh, I'm working with UPS uh, for a little over two and a half years now. I joined the institution um, in February 2020, just before uh, the pandemic had hit all of us. I joined the organization um, as the Dean for Academics. And um, earlier this year, um, I was given the responsibility of uh, being the Pro Vice Chancellor at the University. Um, just a little background um, about myself. Before joining uh, UPS, I was uh, on a fellowship uh, at the University of Oxford, uh, which is uh, given by the British government, UK government. It is known as Chevening Fellowship. Uh, and before that, um, I was um, on another fellowship, which is given by the US government, uh, Fulbright Fellowship at uh, University of California, Berkeley, where I was um, working uh, with Coursera on massive open online courses. Uh, and I worked with um, some of the leading private institutions in India uh, and a physicist uh, myself by training. So, uh, uh, Really pleasure to be here and talking to uh, prospective students and parents. Uh, this is always exciting uh, to talk to students uh, and their parents. Um, I mean, of course, we would love that you, you join us eventually. But even if you don't, this is always an exciting thing to meet uh, young people and kind of um, help, them, help them in making their career decisions um, uh, which could otherwise um, go a long way for, for those students. So thank you so much. So uh, I, I'd, I'd give a brief introduction of the university, would we'll try to tell you a little background of the university, um, what we have been trying to do um, and create a university which, uh, which does things which are interesting, which can excite students, which can create a lot of impact for um, our society. Uh, as well as our great nation and how actually students can contribute uh, towards this nation building and building their careers simultaneously. So uh, brief history, so uh, the name some of you might wonder also, uh, especially those who do not know or do not know much about the university. The, the university was set up in 2003 uh, and the name, original name of the university was University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. Right? Um, for whatever reason, the, that time the university was started like that. It was one of the first, not one of the first in fact, it was the first uh, domain focused university in Asia who was working or which was working in the area of petroleum and energy. Uh, and the act of the university which was passed by a new and small state of Uttaranchal that time, not even Uttarakhand, uh, kind of created the scope or it was mentioned clearly in the charter that the university will offer programs in the areas of petroleum and energy. So this is how it, it started. So it started with B.Tech programs, a uh, couple of B.Tech programs, engineering programs in um, uh, petroleum engineering essentially or oil and gas kind of engineering. Uh, how do you explore, how do you transport and all kinds of aspects of petroleum and oil industry were covered. Eventually the university started growing. Uh, but again, as I said, the act through which the university was set up itself was restrictive that university will offer courses only in the areas of petroleum and energy. So when a business school was launched at the university, uh, it started offering courses such as MBA power management, MBA oil and gas management, MBA aviation management, MBA logistics and supply chain and so on. So essentially, the school was looking from their lens on petroleum and energy sector. Similarly, when the school was law, school of law was launched, they started looking at energy laws and so on because the charter, the act was very, very specific and specified that the university can offer courses only in the areas of petroleum and energy. So this went on for like some seven, eight years and so on. And then the university went back to the state government requested that we want to become a full university. So please allow, please amend the act and allow us, which was done subsequently. So the act was amended and then later it was inserted in the act that the university can offer programs in all the areas, dental, medical, health sciences, design, law, humanities, social sciences, liberal studies, all, all the areas were mentioned in the act and thereafter subsequently we started launching new schools. 
So, we launched school of computer science, then we launched school of design, then we launched school of health sciences and technology, then we launched school of modern media, then we, this year we are launching school of liberal studies and so on. So, now as of today we have uh, uh, we have eight schools now, uh, engineering, uh, business and law were some of the earlier schools and which were also historically one of the largest schools, but computer science was separated from engineering uh, and as of today computer science is the largest school in terms of numbers. Then we have health sciences and technology, modern media, liberal studies and design. So, these are the kind of eight schools that we have. Uh, is there a laser light here in this? No. Okay. So, uh, more than 12,000 students now, about 750 plus faculty members, placements are good. Uh, lot of international collaborations with top foreign universities, I will cover this a little later. Uh, lot of uh, recruiters coming on top. This is very special uh, thing which I have mentioned here, that 23 of our faculty members are now amongst the world's top 2 percent researchers, uh, which is a list which is published by Stanford University every year. Uh, basically, they, they take up research data from various uh, journals and databases and then they have used uh, generated an algorithm by which they identify the top researchers from all over the world. So, I think UPS is one of the institutions now in India which has one of the highest numbers of these people uh, which are working with any institution in India. Out of uh, these 23, um, we have also 7 people who are also amongst world's top 1 percent researchers which is also another list which is published by Clarivet, which earlier used to be known as Thomson Reuters. Uh, and these are known as highly cited researchers. Uh, and out of these seven, of course, three are foreign nationals. So, they are not counted in Indian list, so to say. But India as a country has only 22 people in this list, out of which four are working with UPS. So, which means 20 percent, close to 20 percent of India's highly cited researchers they are with UPS. So, this is one very interesting uh, uh, achievement of the university, I would say. Uh, this is the picture of the university. Some of you might have seen. I do not know. Some of you may not have seen. But when the former president of India, uh, Pranam Mukherjee, visited us, uh, he made this comment that, you know, he was truly overwhelmed by the lush surroundings of the university campus. I mean, it is surrounded by forest, reserved forests and hills from all the sides. Uh, this piece you see, uh, this side somewhere, these are Masuri hills. Uh, from some points in the campus, you can see Masuri in the night and so on. Uh, and this is the journey so far, which I had mentioned that you know, it started in 2003 with engineering and kind of business, and then kept expanding, kept expanding. You would see that the charter expansion had taken place somewhere here, 17, 18, and thereafter, you would see lot of new schools were launched quickly. So, a lot of diversification in terms of from being a uh, kind of limited disciplinary breadth, now it has a full multidisciplinary uh, breadth at the university. Uh, similarly, when uh, Professor Kalam had visited us, he made this remark that UPS is one of the unique institutions in the country, which is imparting education on petroleum and energy, which is lifeline for all the activities of the nation. So, again he had applauded the university, which is quite a matter of uh, pride for all of us. Uh, now, so this is a brief history and I thought, um, you know, I, I, though I come from a physics background, but I strongly believe that it is very important for every student to have a wide base, um, a very, very, uh, so somebody had told me once, you know, if you want, want to create a skyscraper then you have to have a very broad as well as deep foundation. So, if you want to become an expert in whichever area you choose, your breadth as well as your foundation should always be very, very strong. And therefore, however much you can read is going to greatly benefit your respective careers, is what my fundamental philosophy about life is. And therefore, uh, we were re-looking at um, kind of rethinking our curriculum, uh, we knew that NEP was um, about to come and so on. This was in 2020 uh, when um, I had joined the organization. So, I 
with several of my colleagues who are sitting here, we started uh, discussing, debating and rethinking as to how do we look at our curriculum so that our students are given the best possible learning experience as well as they are prepared well uh, after they graduate from us to take on either a job which of course uh, most of them will take but uh, some of them might choose to go for higher studies also elsewhere outside India or within India or some of them might also choose to become entrepreneurs. So whatever path our students take, it is our responsibility that we must uh, prepare them and equip them well so that they become successful. Uh, so uh, essentially we, uh, we came up with this framework which we named as uh, future of learning and also therefore we adopted this new identity, new logo and university of tomorrow logo and so that uh, everything. So everything was then kind of created around that philosophy. Uh, including, let's say, uh, refurbishing our existing buildings and so on because it's like now 19 years old campus, so it is kind of requiring maintenance and refurbishing kind of thing, which is also parallelly going on. But now, everything that we are doing at the university is following and is emerging from the philosophy that we have adopted for ourselves. So, university of tomorrow and that is uh, future of learning. So, essentially, what we said that the future of learning for us as an university is dependent on these five or six things which are mentioned. So essentially uh, when we thought we said naturally if we are a higher educational institution we can't just compromise with academic excellence that anyway is given right. So any institution any good institution uh, should have academic excellence at, at the core of it. And how does academic excellence um, uh, comes into picture. So one is that uh, a good institution should have excellent set of uh, faculty members because starting from Takshila and Nalanda which were famous for uh, you know Chanakya used to teach at um, Nalanda and so on and Charak Shushrut at Takshila and so on. So essentially they were famous for their faculty members right. So any good institution in the world is known because of the kind of faculty members it can attract. Uh, I mean we, we talk about um, Oxford or Harvard and so on. They are known because their faculty members are brilliant, they, they do the cutting edge work and so on, right. So the first priority we set for ourselves was that we will attract and we will try to retain the best possible talent, that was one, academic excellence. The second is um, once the top faculty members come, naturally uh, they would attract good quality of students also, right. And the third thing that we said that once we have good quality faculty members and good quality students, uh, we will just create a conducive and enabling environment, provide them infrastructure and so on and then do not bother them, right. Because many a times, especially in our public institutions what happens is that um, there is so much of bureaucracy involved uh, that people do not uh, kind of faculty members particularly, they, they do not get that freedom to kind of teach uh, and get involved with students so that the student learning experience is very good, right. So, so this is the philosophy fundamentally that we adopted and I will talk a little bit more about academic excellence. Uh, then we also created a framework which was very, very flexible fundamentally based on the American liberal arts um, education model which is quite flexible. I will also give examples of how that actually uh, runs into practice. But literally speaking, um, I had a friend or acquaintant I would say. Um, who holds the record of changing his major 16 times at Stanford University before finally graduating with a major in music. So he became, he graduated with jazz music and eventually became a professor of jazz music at Stanford and he was also a practicing artist. So he would give concerts also all over the world and so on. But before setting up uh, or settling down for jazz, he dabbled into several disciplines. Right. Uh, and then I met him, when I had met him he was actually the president of one of the liberal arts colleges in the US. So the point I am trying to say is that our Indian system historically did not allow this freedom to students to explore before they settle on what they want to do. You know generally most of the students by the time they are passing out of class 12th, unfortunately our schooling system was also very, very rigid and very, very fragmented. So I remember when I studied in a school in a village in Rajasthan, 
very simple thumb rule if you have above certain percent in class 10th you go for science if you are below this then you go for commerce and if you are below 60% or 50% you go for arts very simple thumb rule and teachers class teacher himself or herself will tell you ki aap ye le lo and parents also were theek hai they were in their own world so parents will also say theek hai jo teacher ji bol rahe hain kar lo right but um, and once you choose that discipline for example i ended up with um, uh, maths so i had physics chemistry and maths in class 12 and that's all i mean i now so i i had only physics chemistry and maths whereas as opposed to that if you look at an ib curriculum for example the student choose what or he what he or she wants to do there are several options which are available and student can create any combination that they like to uh, study or experiment similarly american liberal studies model had created this um, uh, this thing that you you take admission into a university then you explore you study you take courses from different different schools departments and so on dabble into it and then you figure out basis what you are liking maybe you will take up a research project also and so on and then you will figure out what major do you want to pursue right so mostly in good liberal arts institutions students do not enter into a program or a degree they don't say that i want to do a ba in economics or i want to do a bsc in mathematics they just enter an undergraduate program and then in first year generally for first two three semesters even four semesters they keep taking different different courses whichever courses that they, that they like to end of second year second semester third semester or fourth semester generally they declare their that major that now that i have studied some 15 20 courses what is it that they, that that i would want to pursue further and therefore i am declaring that i i'll do a, an economics or maths or statistics or physics or computer science right so that is like a more informed decision from the student side rather than suni sunai ki acha senior ne computer science liya mujhe bhi computer science karna hai acha civil engineering mein to aajkal naukriyan nahi mil rahi hai right so all those here say that generally students and parents make their decisions on uh, one child could be very good in computer science another child could actually be very good at chemistry so that doesn't mean that if a child does chemistry there will be no scope in the future right every discipline has scope provided the child is working hard provided the child is curious provided the child is kind of uh, uh, coming up with innovations and so on i mean you would see i mean if even if you look at billionaires today elon musk did physics right mukesh ambani did he do computer science no gautam adani school drop out so the amount of money a student can earn has no correlation with whether you do computer science or chemical or civil also then uh, unmatched global opportunities so we have partnerships with some of the top institutions in the world some of them are also 2 plus 2 programs and so on wherein students can study with us for 2 years and then go to another country and do the remaining part of studies there can can get a degree from those institutions um, university of california berkeley for example ranked among world's top 10 universities has lot of nobel prize winners as their faculty members uh, university of queensland which is our another partner institution again ranked among world's top 50 university university of new south wales again ranked among world's top 50 university and so on and there are several others so those are um, another interesting opportunities we have lately we have been focusing a lot on startups uh, not just because it is a bird buzzword but we fundamentally believe that uh, every student must become entrepreneurial whether they become entrepreneurs or not is their choice but the way entrepreneurs think while they solve a problem is a skill which every student from ups must have and therefore there is a compulsory course also uh, start your startup for every student they have to uh, they have to undergo this training on how do you entrepreneurially solve a problem so no matter which industry do you go to what job do you do these days industry wants uh, students who will own uh, and solve a problem so one of the most common thing which is observed in the organizations is maine to apna kaam kar diya right so if a customer is coming up with a with a challenge or a problem 
एंड देन देर इज अ लार्ज टीम और देर आर सेवरल टीम्स दैट आर इन्वॉल्व एक टीम बोलेगी मैंने अपना काम कर दिया नाउ द द पॉइंट इज दैट इट डजेंट मैटर टू द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वेदर अ पर्टिकुलर टीम परफॉर्म द टास्क और नॉट इफ द टास्क हैज नॉट बीन कम्प्लीटेड इफ द कस्टमर हैज नॉट बीन सर्विस देन इट डजेंट मैटर राइट सो सो बेसिकली वी वॉन्ट स्टूडेंट्स हु आर ऑन्टरप्रन्योरियल नेचर whether they will actually start their startups or not is their choice um again holistic learning i'll talk a little bit about this and university with a purpose so fundamentally whatever we are trying to do uh, the bottom line is of course the societal interest and the national service so uh, and of course serving the humanities and world at large because whatever we do essentially is a service to uh, the mankind or women kind uh okay so coming to academic excellence which was the first thing one of the first things that we did was we started aggressively reaching out to top institutions in india and outside and we started hiring faculty members uh, from good institutions uh, last two and half years we have hired close to 350 faculty members uh, which is i i personally don't think any university in india has done that in last 75 years of history Uh, since the time india became independent public institutions they invariably get into litigations and all kinds of things so du if you see last 15 20 years i don't think du has hired any permanent faculty members so to say sara dog pe chal raha hai right and so on i mean so the, the situation generally is bad at government institution when it comes to hiring in fact we have been able to attract so many of those good great brilliant faculty members who were Um, who studied at top institutions in foreign countries came back they were they were working in du as a doc professor we hired many of them they are now working as full time professors with us people kind of who were teaching at stipends of the world and srccs of the world alsr of the world they are working with us as full time faculty now because you know despite having that talent they never found that chance at public institution there was so much of uncertainty anyway so we hired people from all the hallowed top institutions um, uh, that you can think of i mean i myself was fortunate to go to oxford and berkeley um, uh, some of the good institutions lot of um, uh, recipients of top scholarships across the world road scholars which is like really famous scholarship at oxford university commonwealth fulbright erasmus all kinds of scholarships see one of the things is that uh, which uh, which is a differentiator uh some of the pictures uh, i'd i'd want to spend some time here these are some of the professors uh, we have uh, professor gautam desi raju here he is a distinguished professor with us he was nominated for chemistry nobel prize from india he he recently got retired from iisc bangalore and uh, we requested him to join us and he did um, so so people of his stature and caliber professor karmeshu he is the recipient of shanti swarup bhatnagar award which is like india's nobel prize uh, a mathematician he served as dean of computer science school at jnu four times for 12 years he was dean of computer science at jnu uh mrudu chinda has just returned from university of tokyo she has joined us as a faculty in economics vijay is sitting here is dean of law school uh next is nigda who has just returned from cornell university has joined our health sciences school Uh, as a faculty subhashish um, is one of the best economists india has he is the dean of liberal studies uh, school uh, he was uh, the economic advisor to the prime minister and finance minister during uh, 2008 global economic crisis so he is the person who had drafted india as a response to global economic crisis that time this designation chief economic advisor did not used to exist but essentially he was chief economic advisor to the government of india uh next is uh, professor fani tatli he has joined only this week earlier this week monday uh, he has joined us as uh, the dean of design school and until 10 15 days back he was heading idc at iit bombay uh, idc design center at um, iit bombay and from iit bombay he has joined us uh, next is rahul who was my batchmate at oxford um, and uh, he is currently heading the business school Uh, as well as the incubation center at the school uh, next is nalin he is the dean of our media school um, celebrated author he was the ceo of times of india online before joining us um, 
recently written a 950 pages book on BJP and why BJP is winning elections and so on by the name of New BJP. Uh, it is a best seller on Amazon for last 25 weeks uh, in India. So much so, the book is so well written that the Prime Minister himself invited him at his residence to get a briefing on what were the research findings of his book. book. Uh, and the meeting which was originally scheduled for 30 minutes went on for 90 minutes. So, Prime Minister spent one on one 90 minutes at his house with Nalin. Uh, next is Gurvinder again sitting here, uh, a leading uh, robotics expert. Uh, before joining us, he was group lead of robotics at KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden uh, and has a very strong training from Imperial College London. Uh, and Professor Sunil Rai is our Vice Chancellor. Um, uh, again, very, very experienced administrator. It is his third university as a vice chancellor and so on. So, very, very strong um, team and faculty members. So, these are some of the external recognitions from QS ratings. Uh, we are the only institution in India who has gotten 150 out of 150 marks from the QS on our ability and preparedness to deliver online education, both the infrastructure and the faculty training and so on. Right. Again, number one in industry alliance, excellence in design education by Adobe and so on. Um, so, that is the kind of academic excellence piece um, uh, that, that kind of in a nutshell, very simple, back to basics, no complications, get good faculty, invest in infrastructure, attract good students and do not disturb them. So, uh, so then we created this framework um, and I kind of um, essentially because I was talking about this breadth and depth and all well rounded education and so on. So, essentially we created all those elements in the curriculum which provides that experience to students and we uh, because it was all encompassing touching every aspect of life. Uh, we named it as School for Life. This is a virtual school which caters to every student at the university. So, it essentially what the school does is, um, it has basically five pillars. So, first pillar what we named as the life skills. Essentially, um, there is no university which teaches life skills to students, whereas life skills are very important otherwise. right? And life skills, um, it is presumed that students will learn on their own. So, essentially they are left into the world. Now, you can learn negotiate kaise karna hai, right? or for example, how, do, how to work in a team, right? how do you lead a team, uh, how do you continuously learn or keep learning. These skills are never taught to students, it is assumed ki seek lenge apne se. But we thought it is important that we provide a theoretical framework to our students. There are several theories, research that have happened into all these areas. So, we thought that at least students should have understanding of how these things are learned. So, we created or we introduced six courses uh, under the life skills basket and every student has to take them. They, they are offered through school for life. Some of them are online courses um, and some of them are hybrid courses, some of them are face to face courses also. But the point is that every student is exposed to the researches and the theoretical framework which is relevant for these skills. So, one of the course for example, one of the first courses that the students learn as part of the life skills is learning how to learn. I mean because no matter what we are teaching you and especially if you are learning let us say a tech kind of a thing, 5 years, 10 years a new tech will come and you will have to learn. right? So, this notion at least my parents generation used to have that one time you will have to study in life, you will have to study in one time, you will have to study in one time. So, that notion has gone. So, learning how to learn, how do you or how do you learn a new subject. For example, somebody was telling me. Uh, about the daughter that the daughter wants to do microbiology, but uh, she is she is scared of math, right? And this is a notion amongst many people that you you cannot learn a new thing because you find it difficult. Whereas the research has proven that no matter how difficult a discipline you find, you can still learn it. And there are tricks, there are mental hacks also. So and and research has proven them. So, in that course for example, those tips and twists are also there and then of course, there are general things also. One of the very interesting thing for example, the finding says um, uh, that you can learn a new discipline uh, if you uh, keep working on it for about a month or so, do not run away um, and 
do it in smaller pieces and keep taking more breaks in between and do lot of physical activity keep playing also in between and the researcher from university of california san diego uc san diego he makes an argument that you know based on my research found uh, findings schools and universities should have more recess periods rather than more classes because learning happens more effective when students are given more breaks or frequent breaks between the classes rather than you know having 8 hours back to back classes anyway so there are several of those mental hacks then there are courses life skills such as living conversations leadership and teamwork design thinking working with data uh, persuasive presence and so on all kinds of life skills which are important uh, whenever our students will go and work uh, wherever in whatever walk of life all these skills are very very important the second category or the second pillar that we created was this um, signature basket these names are place holders these are not the courses that we are offering right now but um, uh, again this is a mix of a liberal study common core curriculum model of the american liberal arts institution excuse me it is a mix of university of chicago model of common core curriculum and university of columbia common core curriculum model uh, students should go and google what a common core curriculum is what is university of chicago model what is university of columbia model right so essentially if you go to university of chicago to do your bachelor's degree no matter what discipline you are choosing every student has to study certain same courses so one course for example is the great books right and they will teach you some classical text it could be um, it could be some plato's text or socratic text or whatever it is i mean one or two books they will choose and then every student has to read those books um, and so on similarly in, you know, if you go to university of columbia which is an ivy league they have done it they have done the same thing that every student has to do certain common things but they have made it a little more flexible so they rather give you categories that from physical science category every student has to do two courses now which two courses will you exactly choose is your choice so within that category they might offer 10 courses from those 10 you choose any two but you have to meet the category requirements so you may have to do certain courses in physical sciences category for example you might have to do let's say critical thinking category you might have to do some logic course you might have to do some mathematical course you might have to do and there are several baskets that that they have created uh, so here we have adopted a model which is mix of the two so there are three or four courses which are compulsory for every student uh, and those courses are critical thinking and academic writing uh, environment climate change and sustainability uh, start your startup which i mentioned so th these are technologies of the future which would include metaverse ar vr ai ml defense technology space technology uh, health technology and ethical aspects of technology agar aap self driving car bana rahe ho so how would the system because the computer is taking decisions what are the ethical aspects suppose if you are driving a self driving uh, if, if a self driven car is being run on the road one side is one person other side is four person and hitting is inevitable that you have to meet an accident which situation which scenarios will you choose whether you will kill one person or whether you will kill four people this is a uh, kind of ethical dilemma of technology so um, all these aspects are um uh, kind of covered under this um technologies of the future course technologies and then ethical implications of technologies of the future and then the remaining courses students can choose uh, there will be a basket of courses from which they can choose so that is signature then there is also an exploratory basket which basically which is the third pillar which is essentially a tool for allowing students to explore which is one of the things that i, I gave that example of my acquaintance who changed his major 16 times at stanford uh, because stanford framework allowed him to do that our indian institutions never allowed that so through this window of exploration the student can dabble into other disciplines so for example if you are taking admission into design you can still take courses from health science or computer science or engineering or law or business and so on through this window so university is forcing that you take 18 credits 15 to 18 credits depending on whether you are into a 3 year program or a 4 year program you take from other schools or other departments and if you choose to take all those courses from a particular school or a department you can get a minor also from that school or a department so essentially you can have a secondary career path also for example a design major with let us say 
an IPR minor for example. And therefore, you could be a very good uh, expert who has a deep understanding of design as well as who has an understanding of intellectual property rights and vice versa. So, those interesting career combinations can also emerge from what you choose to study. Uh, and then of course, there are internships at the end of um, uh, every year which is the fourth pillar which is experiential learning. End of first year you go and work with NGOs, end of second year you go and work with a startup or a government sector entity, end of third year you go and work with uh, an industry and, uh, and I am giving this example for people who are enrolled into a four year program. And the eighth semester which is the last of the fourth uh, year you do a capstone which can have three tracks. So, either you do a pre placement, you take a pre placement offer, go and work with an industry uh, and do some work, do an internship or a project work there, which is industry capstone, or you do a research project under your professor at the university or wherever um, at another good research institution outside um, UPS, which is within India or outside India, or the third option could be a startup capstone. So, if the internship with startup and start your startup course excited you enough, you have, we have an incubator in house. Uh, you can incubate your company and you can continue to work on creating your own company and still get a credit, 20 credits, which can then, uh, which, which, so that your studies also do not suffer. You kind of are able to create your company also and you are able to graduate also. And then of course, a um, um, lot of focus on sports, cultural activities and service led learning. So, it is compulsory for every student to spend certain hours either play or join a student club or society where you participate in dance, drama, theatre, whichever you like, music, um, trekking, hiking, adventure, whatever appeals you, you join that or you uh, choose to do service to the neighboring communities, villages, environment, we are surrounded by beautiful forests and wildlife and so on. So, whatever excites you do something, just do not sleep and play video games. Uh, and industry in the classroom is what I was, uh, I, I had already mentioned industry in the classroom. So, all these things they kind of we created or we named this framework as school for life. Uh, and this is a sample student journey might look like that you know. So, for example, if you entered the first term, there are some signature courses, there are some life skills courses, then community service is kind of uh, already there in the first year. Uh, third, so, every term generally there is a signature course and life skill courses. Then uh, here 8 week long, 6 to 8 week long social sector internship then undergraduate research project follows, then design and innovation thinking follows which is the signature uh, which is a life skill course. End of second year there is a startup or a government sector internship I have already mentioned. So, every semester there is a signature and a life skill course, several projects that kind of um, continues uh, and then uh, you know there are um, generally the start your startup course. Uh, and the incubation ends with a shark tank kind of an event which we one of them we had just now uh, which attracted close to 2 crores of investment for various startups that we have. Even we gave about 30 lakhs of grant uh, to many of the startups as a university so that they can develop their prototypes and so on. Uh, and then this capstone research or startup um, capstone or an industry capstone um, essentially lot of um, uh, grinding on real world learning, sports, cultural and service uh, led learning and so on. This is uh, some of uh, uh, the bit on our startup uh, ecosystem. Again as I said we have already uh, working a lot on kind of um, promoting the starting up culture at the university. Uh, end to end support from selection to incubation to pitch to mentoring to nurturing and networking and all those things and then help them uh, kind of fly. Uh, uh, the first cohort which we launched earlier this year had 400 applications from our students who wanted to launch their startups. Finally, we selected 65 from which 45 are still active, 20 kind of died and those 45 made their pitches for the grant uh, competition that we were giving out of which we gave grants to 29 startups. Um, seed grants, we are not expecting anything in return, 
you just gave 1 lakh rupees to everybody that you work and develop your prototype. And once you are ready with your prototype, then we will do a shark tank where we will invite external invest investors also and so on. See. So, very good university partners that we have and students have kind of options to go and study with them for a semester. Some of, I mean the, the exact nature of the arrangement vary from partner to partner. Some of them uh, are study abroad where students can go study there. Some of them are exchange where their students also come, our students also go. Some of them are progressions wherein our students study here for a couple of years and then go and finish the degree there and so on. So, all kinds of uh, opportunities are available. Uh, and this is the global pathway program that I was talking of uh, that students have option to study with us for some time and then kind of go to the partner university, finish the degree from those partner institutions. Uh, uh, we also now have, so UQ and UNSW, they initially had started as an engineering partnership, but now uh, even the management students can go and study with them on the degree there. Nottingham Trent UK had started as a design partnership, but now I think they are including BBA also, uh, the business program also. So, there are school specific partnerships also, program specific partnerships also and so on. In fact, uh, this University of Queensland program has become so popular, last year 93 students enrolled for it, that they will study with us for two years and then they will go to Australia. This year I think close to 200 students want to do that, uh, because it is a, it's a great program. Uh, because if you directly go there, you would end up spending like 1.5 crores to 2 crores. But if you go through this track, you would get the same degree in about 50 lakh rupees. There is a significant uh, cost benefit, um, rest everything is the same. And these are some of the industry alliances I already mentioned. So, um, KPMG, JE Health, they are also school specific in some sense. Uh, we just inaugurated a lab uh, with National Stock Exchange which uh, feeds in uh, near real time data of stock market for all our students. So, it is 15 minutes of delay uh, and students can do lot of simulation based learning on how financial markets work. So, it is very interesting um, uh, framework for our students. Uh, and of course, lot of scholarships are given to uh, different categories. So, there were girl child scholarships, there were Uttarakhand domicile scholarships. Uh, then there are uh, merit scholarships which are given in the range of 20 percent to kind of 75 percent. This year we launched two new scholarships, Jyoti and Vijay. Jyoti was for uh, students belonging to uh, parents whose annual income was less than 12 lakh rupees and uh, Vijay is essentially uh, a scholarship meant for uh, students from sports background. Uh, so, this year one of our UPS alumni, he won uh, a silver medal in Commonwealth Games and that excited us and we thought maybe if we can uh, start having more presence from UPS on uh, Asian Games, Commonwealth Games and hopefully Olympic podiums, that would be nice um, and good for us as well as for the country. We are trying to attract some good sports um, background uh, students and uh, also support. So, this scholarship will cover, both these scholarships will cover 100 percent tuition waiver, also free hostel, free food and everything. So, everything is free for these 100 kids uh, that we would select this year. Uh, and then student outcomes. So, generally you know one of the things which, which I, which I kind of become uncomfortable when the first question a student or a parent asks ki placement kaisa hai kitna highest ZTC tha, right. And those are like very, um, I mean of course placement is important, but um, uh, generally I think people should think more about the learning experience and the career rather than the first salary. Because um, uh, you know most people would start their uh, careers at maybe a median or an average kind of salary and then depending on how they perform on the job, they grow. And the, the growth trajectories are very different for different people. I mean it is not, I mean of course it is great to start with a um, CTC of 1 crore and what not, but not everybody does that right. From out of, uh, I mean these media reports are also faulty, they say, they give you one example of somebody in India who got 1 crore of CTC and therefore everybody starts thinking ki 1 crore ka CTC milna chahiye, which is, which is not a right way to, or right mindset to think about choosing an institution, whether you come to UPS or not is a is a separate thing, but this is not something 
विच शुड इन्फ्लुएंस योर डिसीजन कि एक करोड़ का पैकेज मिला कि नहीं मिला पचास लाख का मिला कि नहीं मिला बिकॉज वाइल हैविंग दिस इंडक्शन सेशन विद कंप्यूटर साइंस स्टूडेंट्स द इनकमिंग क्लास लास्ट वीक आई आज ने वेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चन दैट यू नो द बैच विच इज ग्रेजुएटिंग दिस ईयर वी हैव आई थिंक नाउ फाइव स्टूडेंट्स हुर प्लेस विथ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एंड एवरीबडी वॉज अबाउ फिफ्टी लैक्स ऑफ सी टी पी नाउ द द क्वेश्चन दैट आई आज वॉज दैट यू नो ऑल दीज किड्स लेट्स एफ हंड्रेड किड्स वर ग्रेजुएटिंग दे ऑल वर सिटिंग इन द सेम क्लास दे ऑल वर टॉट द सेम सिलेबस ऑल वर टॉट बाई द सेम फैकल्टी राइट then what why is it so that five students got placed at 50 lakhs and then there is a distribution right some placed at 30 also some placed at 15 also and and some are not even placed i mean because there is an asterisk right those who were eligible and eligible is that there are students who are struggling they are not even getting five cgpa they are failing so so the the basic question i was trying to um, i wanted our students to think upon or ponder over is that these numbers are not something which one should chase they will fall into place and you will make money you will make enough money in your life and one of my another friend rahul especially who was there who was the dean of our business school he always say this thing that whenever we all will die we will still have money in our bank accounts which we could not spend and it's a truth So please don't think about numbers and fancy figures and CTCs and so on. Rather, you think about how can you learn more, how can you read more, how can you add to your experiences more, how can you travel more. That is like living life. That adds to your profile. That adds to your experiences. Money is an outcome. Money is not something that you chase. Money will come, and unfortunately, money will come at a time when you will feel that चलो ठीक है अब हो गया. right it it is like curious case of benjamin button right that by the time you start getting old and so on you start getting lot of money so you don't have money with you when you actually can enjoy your money and when you actually start getting money it is the time when you actually can't enjoy the money so it should have been the reverse way that when you when you when you get born you should have the money which you actually have when you become old and then the money can decrease how does it matter i mean by the time you you so anyway so 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 the uh, outcomes generally we don't measure only in terms of placement for us outcomes are very comprehensive one is that whether the student is learning what we want the student to learn and therefore we clearly track learning outcomes and objectives for every student every semester right so whether a particular course the way it was designed whether the student learned what the course wanted it him or her to learn so as i said so outcomes for us are very comprehensive and not just straight jacketed placements so placement of course is an important part we understand that people are spending a lot of money to get quality education and unfortunately we being a private organization if we want to hire the kind of people i showed we have to pay them also i mean they also have families and this thing so so therefore our cost structure becomes such that we have to charge the kind of fee that we charge unfortunately uh, i wish government had spent a much more uh, budget than they are spending to have public institutions and so on that's where i could study otherwise my parents never had money to kind of send me to private or organization uh, if i i could not have free public education system i wouldn't have been standing here today anyway so so placement startups and higher education all are like important pillars for us when it comes to uh, the outcomes of course i mean asterisk of course 100% placement of all the students who were working right so it's not guaranteed that every student will get placed every student who has a cgp of above 6 is getting placed historically for last several years but if you are not able to get even a 6 cgp on a scale of 10 then you need to introspect why are you not doing that and one of the very basic thing as i mentioned earlier is because students do not go to class if your parents and students especially who are sitting here if your parents are spending a lot of money on you they are of course concerned about your well being they want you to do well in life the only expectation from you is to get up and go to class 
if you do that you will certainly be able to get above that 6 if you do that religiously and most students they don't do this unfortunately uh, and then of course these numbers are written um, which is every year it is increasing so and these are some of the good companies that come to campus for hirings and so on uh, this is on the startup side in fact this particular one i would i would want to uh, some of you might have seen these taxis blue smart uh, electric vehicles this is um, um, our alumni who has launched this in fact, he was the last year um, uh, convocation speaker also Anmol, uh, who has founded this Blue Smart Mobility. Uh, series A, he recently, I think last month or last to last month, he raised 50 million dollars for Series A for his startup um, at a valuation of, I think, more than 500 million dollars or so. So, very soon likely to become another unicorn. Um, and then, of course, there are a few others. Pension Box is another uh, startup which has recently raised some money at a valuation of 10 million dollars. Homeversity is another one, again uh, valuation, current valuation of a few million dollars and so on. So, some of our students are already doing well uh, on the starting up side uh, and lot of other things. So, for example, we have recently received for 6 crore rupees of uh, uh, project funding from Uttarakhand government, 1 crore and 5 crores from DST government of India and lot of. Uh, and this all this work has happened in last one year. So, we are really happy that if in one year we can do this much, sky is the limit. Uh, and higher education also several of our students have been going historically to many, many top institutions in India and outside India also. This year only I think 10 days back or so two of our students have been ranked the fourth and fifth in gate exam uh, all India. So, naturally they will go to some good institutions in India. And many of them, they have been going historically to top institutions outside India also. Um, so, again, as I think, I think the bottom line is that the university has a lot to offer, a um, lot of collective wisdom in the university by the faculty members we have and our own personal experiences and so on. And we are willing to kind of uh, go out of our ways to help you and provide you with the experience that you might be looking for. But again, bottom line is that the onus of your experience and learning is on you. So, if you are a passive participant in the system, then the system will not be able to give you the kind of experience that you that you deserve. You should demand experience from the system. As long as you are active, you will be able to create a much more enriching experience for yourself is my bottom line. No matter where you go, I mean that is the bottom line and fundamental rule of any university that you would go to. If you are a passive uh, participant in the process, then you will end up being an average kind of student and create an average learning experience for yourself. If you are active, then your experience would be much more enriching than otherwise.